What is up guys, in this video we're going to be discussing what k-nearest neighbors are and this is a classification algorithm that you can use in machine learning and as you can see from this chart right here it doesn't really make sense at the moment but what we will be creating is a way to identify whether someone is obese or whether they are fit and as you can see what it's based on is previous factors such as the height and the weight. So as you can see over here we have some plots that have a low weight and a high height which essentially means that the person is skinny and fit otherwise we have a different classification that when the person is short and has a high weight they are considered to be fat so we're going to be creating this very classification algorithm so it's a really good example for getting started with k nearest neighbors and the first thing i want to discuss is how this works so to do that i went ahead and prepared this small chart and as you can see right now, it just looks like a mess. There's nothing really named. What you need to pay attention to is that there are two groups here. One that is classified all the way up here. And as you can see, it kind of forms a small group and one that is formed down here. Now the concept of K nearest neighbors is that when you put a new plot, it's going to calculate which two or which three are the closest. And based on that estimation, it's going to turn this either into a red dot and classify it as this, or turn it into a green dot and classify it as whatever this is. So one thing you need to note is that we're going to have the ability to modify how many of these dots we want to apply to the program. So for this chart, I decided to insert the number of three, which means it's going to check for the three closest neighbors. And depending on that, it's going to classify this dot. Since these two dots are the closest to this unknown dot, we are going to have it classified as a green dot. Otherwise, if this dot was around here, it would make a line to this one, it would make a line to this one, and it would make a line to this dot over here. So it would essentially turn into a red dot. And another very important thing to note is that this number should not be divisible by the amount of groups there are. So for this example, as you can see, we have two groups, and that's why I chose three. You can even choose the number one or five. It just should not be divisible by this because there is a chance that you might have one line that goes here and one line that goes here. And then it's going to be a perfect split, which makes it very hard to determine for the program whether that is a green dot or a red dot. So you actually want to make sure that it has a chance to split the 50% chance. And that can be done just by making sure the number is one off from whatever the total is. But that's actually going to be all of the theory we will be discussing for this program. Now let's actually get into creating the program. So the first thing we want to do is import numpy as mp. And then we want to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then from sklearn neighbors, we are going to import kn neighbor classifier. And then finally from sklearn.model selection, we will be importing train test split. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a function called fitness analyzer. And that's gonna take two parameters. One's going to be the height and the other one's going to be the weight. So we can predict whether the person is fat or fit. And for this, we're going to create some sample data to keep this tutorial simple. And you can always insert your own real data later, but I think this is the best way to understand how this works. So we're gonna create two different variables. One's going to be called overweight people. So this is going to be a two dimensional array. And inside here, we need to first insert the weight of the person followed by the height. So this person weighs 100 kilos and is 90 centimeters tall, which as you may imagine is quite fat. But uh, let's move on with this. And now we're going to add 120 kilos for a one meter tall person, a 200 kilo person for someone that's only 175 centimeters, an 80 kilo person for someone that is 100 centimeters, and finally a 40 kilo person for someone that's only 60 centimeters tall. So this will be our example list for overweight people. Then we're gonna type in fit people and we're gonna put some more average sizes such as 60 kilos for 175 centimeters. Then we got 90 kilos for 190, followed by 80 kilos for 180, 50 kilos for 140, and finally 30 kilos for 120. Then we have to go and create a variable which is called people so we can combine the fit people plus the overweight people and we have to also tell the program which one of these are fit people and which one of these are fat people because as you can imagine to the program all it sees right now is a list of numbers so we have to go ahead and type in is fit 
and this is going to equal an array and the array has to match the amount of elements that is in this people list. So right now you need to note that this is a list of 10 people, five fit people and five overweight people and it goes in the order from fit people to overweight people. So the fit people are going to be represented by the number of one and the fat people are going to be represented by the number of zero. So when we get these numbers we can later process them and tell the user who is fat and who is fit. So just make sure that this is fit list has the same number of elements as the people list. Then we are going to create the input and output variables, which is usually named X for the input, which is going to be a NumPy array of the people. And Y is what we want to find out. So this is the naming convention of the element that we want to discover. So Y is going to be a NumPy array of is fit. And for this program, since we don't have enough samples, I'm not going to use the train test split but I'm still going to include it because in case you want to add your own data, chances are you might include a lot more numbers and it will make this much more relevant. But for the small numbers that we're using, this will not really work. So let's just go ahead and type in train x, test x, train y, and test y. And that's going to equal train test split where we have to insert x, y, a random state if you want, and a test size, which is going to be 0.20. And one more time, this is going to give you some very weird results if you don't have enough samples. So make sure you have enough samples before using train and test to get reliable responses. So the next thing we have to do is create and fit the model. So we're going to type in model is going to equal K neighbors classifier. And inside here, we need to define the number of neighbors that we want to supply. As I showed you in the chart, that is represented by K. And for this example, we want to pick three or an odd number because we only have two different classes that we have to classify. Then we will fit the model with train X and train Y. And this is optional for this program because we don't have enough samples. But again, once you have more samples, this will become relevant. So we want to create something that prints the score of the model which tells us the accuracy of how good our model is. And essentially to do that, you just type in print and you can type in score so you know what this does. And it's going to be model.score. And inside here, you would put the test X and the test of Y. Right now, with the amount of samples we have, this will not give us a reliable score because sometimes it will tell us it is 100% accurate and sometimes it will tell us it is 0% accurate because we do not have enough samples. I'm just leaving that in because it can be used later. Next is the more important part and that is the value that we want to predict and we're just going to Wow, it's in capital letters. And we're just going to call that the prediction. And that is going to equal our model dot predict. And this has to be a two dimensional array with the weight and the height. Then we have to go ahead and print the prediction so we can understand what is happening. So here we're going to type in formatted string and that's going to be a prediction. And I just did this for myself actually because I wanted to understand what number came out. And you just type in prediction at the index of zero and it's going to give you the prediction from this program. Then we're going to add a comma and we want to add a response here. So we're going to type in fit if the integer of the prediction at zero is equal to one, else we will just type in the person is fat. So we had to turn this into an integer because what it returns is a NumPy array and we cannot use that. And to simplify this, it's going to return the text of fit if the int of prediction is equal to one. Otherwise, if it's equal to zero, it's just going to return fat. And we actually have enough to go ahead and create a prediction. So let's go ahead and type in fitness analyzer. We are going to try to predict someone with the weight or with the height of 100 and the weight of 200. Let's find out if this person is overweight or not. So let's go ahead and right click on our program and click on run. So our program tells us that this person is fat. What if it is the other way around? So we're going to say 200 centimeters tall and 70 kilos. Then our program is going to tell us that this person is fit. And just by looking at this, you wouldn't really be able to understand how it made this prediction. And that's why I really think it's useful to create a graph. And that's exactly what we will do right now. So let's type in plot the data. And to keep this tutorial simple, I'm not going to make it color coded 
but if you want the color-coded version, you can go into my GitHub repository, which is in the description box down below, and you can copy that, which will give you the colored split as I showed you in the intro of this video. But to scatter this data, all we have to do is type in plt scatter, and we need to insert some values, of course. And we want to insert the values of x, and that's going to be all of the values at the index of zero. And for the y, we still have to click or insert x and say we want all of the values at the index of one. Then we can go ahead and give this some labels. So plt y label, which is going to be the height and plt x label, which is going to be the weight. Then we should do plt dot show. And the final dot I want to add is our input so we can understand where our dot went. And to do that, we are just going to actually write one right below that one. So plt scatter again. And inside here, we will insert the weight, the height, and we will change the color to red. So just type in color and type in R, and we will change the size of this dot to 100. Now, when we go ahead and rerun the program, it should give us a chart, and it's also going to tell us where our dot is. So as you can see, essentially we have two groups here. All of these dots down here are considered to be obese people, and all of these dots up here are considered to be fit people. So right now we specified K to be three, which means it's going to look for the three closest neighbors, which as you can tell right here are these three over here which means this will be classified as one of these dots over here. Now, if we go back and we actually invert this, so let's go ahead and change this to 70 and change this to 200. So a 70 centimeter person who weighs 200 kilos will probably be considered fat. And as you can see, this is all the way down here, which means this is a closest neighbor. This one here is a closest neighbor and this one's a closest neighbor meaning that three of the fat people turn this one also into a fat dot. Now let's pick something that's a bit more debatable. Let's say, um, let's go for 175 centimeters by 90 kilos. So it still places it around here and the program says it's a fit person. Let's go ahead and actually increase this to 160. And now you'll notice it's over here. So the program right now, will probably check between this dot, this dot, and this dot over here. And since this dot belongs to the fit, it's going to have a counter of one for the fit and a counter of two for the fat, which means it will classify this dot once again as a fat person. And yeah, that's actually all I wanted to go over in this video. It was a very simple introduction to how you can use K nearest neighbors to classify some sort of random input. And you can actually do this with as many groups as you want, but uh, I believe two or three is just a very natural number to insert, maybe even four. And again, if you want to see the colored graph, you can go to my GitHub repository. The link is in the description down below. But otherwise, if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to look at them. And as always, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.